You say you are of unintended consequences or that the Torah emphasizes to us, meaning there is the action of a person or a group so that immediate action can be judged. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it right? Or was it wrong? But from that action, there flows later events based on that action that no one foresaw and that have to be taken into consideration when we judge whether it was good or bad. So, for instance, in last week's parsha, we see a Maragui, uh, a negative for uh, Terence and Shah. Publicly so. Where did that flow from? So, I mentioned it last week that that uh, began with Yisro. Because he said, I'm not going. I'm going to give a large table of morality. I'm going home. I don't want to go. Moshe begs them. Come with us. Or he's alone. They know him. You're our wisest advisor. You tell us how to set up the company. No, I'm not going. So that weakens the Jewish people in the case of the year of Israel. And it plays itself out in later events in the Maragui, who also said, we're not going either. And in order to justify themselves, they gave a negative report and the entire generation of the desert was doomed to destruction. Will not see her to Israel. Yisro did not have that in mind. But unintended consequences. So this week's Marsha says, When he got caught up in Yisro, and caused and Levi, and both of the Aviro, and the Ruben, all the Bellets. And they make a machokers against Moshe and Aaron. And uh, they have all the correct uh, democratic slogans. Now, do what he starts to al Hashem. You want to be a dictator? Who gave you the right? Our youth is as big as yours. To give jobs to your brother, to your nephew, to your tribe. Where's the antecedent to that? I mean, for over 30 years, man, I'm sorry, for over a number of years, they're willing to accept motion. And in fact, they came to all without motion. That's the story of Diego. So he Moshe that took us out of Egypt. I mean, he's not here. Without him, we can't function. And now they say, who are you, Moshe? You're not entitled. Where does that be here? So that, that also is part of the law of unintended consequences. It begins with Aaron and Miriam themselves. They spoke against Moshe. And they gave the same complaint, so to speak. Arat, only Moshe spoke with their own We're also prophets. Your Bonjour spoke with us as well. Yeah. 
his own brother and sister found it within themselves to publicly criticize him, to say that somehow he's doing things that are incorrect. So that filters down. Doesn't take much to be smart a person. In fact, the greater the person, the easier it is to be smirching. And they said the same thing that Korach said. We're just as great as Moshe. God spoke to us also. So therefore, they are also responsible for what happens here. For what happens with Korah. And all of this will help us understand, I shouldn't use the word understand, but appreciate the severity of the punishments that we see in this Kodesh against the wrongdoers. No, I understand. So, so well, you do. You have the best of reasons for not going. But the bottom line is that you weaken the Jewish people. And therefore, Israel and his family are not part of the Jewish people. It's the sheep and the Rishonim. That they were gearing, gearing to show him in the, in the, in the time of the show. But they're not part of the Jewish people. And here by Das Korah, Moshe says so strongly in Bria Ibra, you gotta create. And if you didn't create it before, create it now that the earth should swallow him up. Moshe is not a man of vengeance. His whole career is based on all of the Jewish people, on tolerance of their foibles, on the willing to accept their weaknesses. And here he says, uh, be swallowed into the earth alive. Because that's the law of unintended consequences. And therefore, our own Miriam died in the desert. There's a question of the fortune when did they die? So, if you follow the Chumash chronologically, they don't die to Parshish Lukas. But if you say, as Rashi says, they moved on the Mukha of Torah, they died before anybody else died. Of that generation. Because ultimately, they bear some responsibility for what is going to happen here with Korah. So that's a bitter lesson of life. But it's one that we should always appreciate that there are unintended consequences to our behavior. And that eventually, in the judgment of heaven, that we are responsible for that as well. Even though we did not foresee it, and perhaps we never wished it. But nevertheless, these are the facts. This is what occurred. And that weakness served to weaken later generations as well. And we live at a time when we see uh, all of this nonsense played out in front of our eyes. People write up op op-eds, people give interviews, people say what's going to be. Oh, do you? Nonsense. I'm as big an expert as Ava Barak. <laughs> 
I'm a little poorer, but uh, where do you get the merit for study? And therefore, we see all the therefores, and they're all responsible. So that all has to be borne in mind. People call me up, they say, well, what's your opinion? I say, I have no opinions. <laughs> what do you mean you have no opinion? I said, if you're 90 years old, not, not bad, I have an opinion. It's the safest way to deal with life. And that's part of the great lesson that we learn here in the Swedish Bar to realize that there are unintended consequences and that eventually we are held responsible even to those as well.